Hi, I'm Mr. Dr. Professor Ryan Hansen, and today, in episode 3 of Man vs. Geography, we're going to be talking about the top 10 events that made the American Revolution inevitable. But what does it really mean if something is inevitable? We must first define the word inevitable. According to Google.com, inevitable is defined as certain to happen, unavoidable. So without further ado, we are going to go over the top 10 events that made the American Revolution certain to happen, unavoidable. The Navigation Acts were established from 1651 to 1673. They were intended to restrict colonial trade between countries other than England. This was done by limiting exports to only ships made by England and prohibiting the colonies from trading directly with certain countries. These acts supported England's mercantilist ideology and enabled them to maximize their profits from the colonies. However, the colonists weren't willing to deal with these restrictions and had to resort to smuggling instead. As a result of the Seven Years' War... Well, why is it called the Seven Years' War when it lasted for nine years? Wait, who are you? I don't know. Well, get out of here! No, I, no, but I want to know. I mean, it lasted for nine yeah, years. It should be called the Nine Years' War. The Proclamation of 1763 was proclaimed at the end of the French Indian War. It kicked France out of most of its American settlements, dividing them between England and Spain. It prevented the British colonists from settling west of the Appalachian Mountains, which is exactly what they wanted to do. So they did it anyway. This added some tension between Britain and its colonies. Hey, what are you doing here? How we make a show, bruh. But how did you even... Wait, you look familiar. No, I don't. Um, fine, whatever. In 1764, England composed the Sugar Act. This was kind of a modification to the Molasses Act, which was a part of the Navigation Acts. In addition to adding taxes to several goods such as sugar, wine, and coffee, the act decreased the tax per gallon of molasses from six cents to three cents and enforced it more strictly than before. As a result, the colonial economy was disrupted due to their heavily dependent upon smuggling no longer being a viable option. Hey, stop that! The colonists had no choice but to comply. They weren't happy about it, and it just added to the reasons why they didn't like Britain. In 1765, England created the Stamp Act, which placed a tax on all printed paper by mandating that all printed paper must have a stamp on it. It was clear to the colonists. Shut up. It was clear to the colonists that England was only doing this to make as much money from them as possible, so of course, they protested. They weren't so mad that they had to pay taxes, bruh. It was more that they saw it as a slippery slope that would lead to more taxing in the future. Colonists formed the Stamp Act Congress and the Sons of Liberty, which protested and boycotted British goods. The next year, Britain gave in to their protests by repealing the Stamp Act and lessening the effects of the Sugar Act. They followed up with this by declaring the Declaratory Act to reinforce their dominance. And it went pretty much exactly like this. Hello, America. It's me, the King of England. I just wanted to let you know that, you know, okay. I'm better than you and I have power yeah. over you. And I, I could tax you if I wanted to. Yeah. I mean, not that I want to or anything, but, you know, I could if I wanted to. I mean, like, not that I'm not saying I'm, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just saying I could do it because I have the ability to do it because you know, I like I'm like pretty much in supreme control over you, so you know that gives me the right to tax you at any point if I wanted to. Just to be sure that you know it's not what I want to do. It's not my intention, but you know I could I could do it. I I could. It could happen. It probably won't happen, but you know I'm just saying it, it could happen. And of course, they did. The very next year, England announced the Townsend Acts. These acts were pretty much just made by England for the sole purpose of making more money from the colonies. These acts included changes in salary, aka revenue, and more taxes on goods such as paper, oil, lead, and of course, tea. Of course, this outraged the colonists, leading to more boycotting and the creation of the Daughters of Liberty. England repealed all these acts, except the tax on tea. In 1770, a protest in the streets got out of hand, resulting in British officers killing five colonists. When word got out about the event, it was blown out of proportion. Some even called it a massacre. It wasn't a huge deal, but it just added to the reasons why the colonists were mad at England.
1773, England began providing the colonies with lower quality tea. Because of this, the prices for tea went down and the demand was also lowered. So that resulted in the merchants and smugglers being able to make less profit from their tea sales. Hey, good morning, sir. Would you like to buy some tea? Tea for sale. No. <laughs> hey, you want to buy some tea? No. Uh -huh. They're once again saw it as a slippery slope. And as a slippery slope, they took matters into their own hands to change it. Bruh. On December 16th, 1773, a group of colonists dressed up as Indians and dumped millions of dollars in today's money worth of tea into the Boston Harbor. They thought that England would give in and repeal the act like they did before, but they were very wrong. And number one, the Hey, I wanna say it. But no, I'm not, I'm gonna say it. Come on, it's my turn, bruh. But this is my turn. No, this is my turn. This is my show. And number I'm one, here. the coercive acts. I'm not, I'm not, These four acts were released by England. To, uh, also known as the intolerable acts. And they what they what they did was they made it so that they closed the port of Boston and they also made all British officials in the colonies immune to criminal charges and they also made it so that all colonists must house British troops upon request and they also they made it so you can't have democratic town meetings anymore these, these acts were pretty bad and the colonists didn't really like hey i thought i told you to get out of here yeah i thought he said that too okay fine well okay then how did he know the script anyway wait how do i know the script yeah how do you know the script I don't know. Uh, this was the last straw for the colonists. All of these events built up tension over time between England and the colonies. This is what finally pushed them over the edge, leading to the American Revolution in 1775, which led to the independence of the second greatest country in the world, beginning with the letter A. Algeria? No, America. Oh, was the first Afghanistan? No, Australia. Oh, well, at least I tried. <laughs>